Hello, everyone. It's really nice to see all of you here. Uh, we will start in exactly 11 minutes, so get ready. And maybe while we are waiting, if you hear me, please um, write plus in chat so that so that we know that everything is working correctly. Okay, thank you. Hi, Dmitri. Hi, Pavel. Hello, Stefan. Yeah. Yes, Nandin, you wanted to say something? You've raised your hand. Okay. And um, also, as we're already here, let's just try out one small mechanism uh, of Zoom. During today's webinar, we really want you also to participate in this discussion. So at a certain moment, you might want to ask a question. So let's check that everyone understand, everyone sees this option of raising a hand. It's a little button next to chat. Let's try that out. Just raise your hand. Those, okay, great. Hi, Dmitri, I see you. And so it will work like that. You raise your hand and I unmute you just because you know if everyone is talking, it can get really messy, especially now that everyone is working from home and there are dogs barking, kids playing around. So this is why everyone is muted. Please do not get offended. Great, I see that everyone is getting here. Okay. Great, now we're 24 people here. 
once again, for those who has just connected, please, hello, Natoli, uh, you have a question? If that is the case, please. Uh, Okay. Anatoly, do you have a question? You are raising your hand. If that's the case, please write it in, in chat. Something is wrong, I cannot unmute you. And uh, in case anything goes wrong with the sound, please don't forget to write it in the chat. We will fix it as soon as possible. Okay, we'll be starting in five minutes exactly. Hope you're as excited as I am. Okay. That's a nice question. No, but there, uh, Stepan, thanks for asking. Stepan is asking if there is anyone whose native language is English. Uh, for now, as or I look at the list of current attendees, I think the answer is no. Uh, but we have got some colleagues that are coming to the webinar. They still have got four minutes to come that do not speak any Russian at all. For example, there will be people from Turkey, will, there will be people from Spain coming, from Germany as well, so yeah. This is why the language of the webinar is English. Thanks for asking, Stepan. Hi, Evgeny, nice to see you too. Okay, three minutes to start. And we are, of course, waiting for Konstantin Rupasov to, to come to the meeting because he's the star of today's webinar, of course. Yeah, I'm already here. Hi, everyone. Hi, Konstantin. Um, once again, uh, please, uh, let's do this. Now we will do it at one minute to 6 p.m. Moscow time. We'll check if everyone hears us well, if everyone sees us well, because it's important, right?
Okay, we have got 39 attendees so far. Still waiting for some people to come. It's just one minute till we start. So please let's check once again that everyone hears us well and sees us well. Please write, for example, a plus or write hello in the chat so that we know that every, everyone is here listening to us. Great, thank you so much once again. Great, thank you so much and hello once again to everyone. Oof. Hi, Uliana. Uh, okay. Uh, so we are 48 here. It's just the moment when we start the webinar and if, I'm sure there will be more people coming. My name is Anna Lvovska. I'm business development manager at One Scene International. Today I will be hosting this webinar. Thank you all for coming. It's really thrilling to see you all here. Uh, the webinar is called One Scene Enterprise Q&A webinar. Ask about everything you wanted to know, but were embarrassed to ask. That's interesting. Of course, the most important person today is, uh, unfortunately not me, but Konstantin Rupasov. In case you do not, in case you do not know him, I will do a short, a brief, very brief introduction. Konstantin is once enterprise expert with more than 15 years of experience. He is founder and ex director of performance and scalability unit at One C. Also, he is the author of Russian One C expert training course and certification exam. This is for CIS countries but recently has been working on Once Enterprise video course in English. And let's just double check. Uh, could you please answer really fast? There will be a form appearing. If you have looked at Once Enterprise video course in English, there will be like, uh, Alexandra, could you please do this question form for us? It will just pop up, It'll be very easy for you to answer. And um, so th this is us. This is Konstantin, a total expert evangelist of the platform all around the world. And me just like asking your questions, helping for helping everything to be very smooth today. Um, and it's also, as we will be talking to each other, it's very interesting to know something about you. So I would kindly ask you to write down in chat an answer for three really simple questions. Uh, where your customers are? What is your experience with Wansi platform? Are you developing your own solution? Are you working on a verticalization of some other solution? Are you just implementing? or are you just starting your route with Bansi Enterprise? It will be very helpful for us to understand which audience we have today, okay? Please do that. And while you are writing this down, I will explain you little technical things of today's meeting, today's webinar. First of all, um, this is Q&A session. So there are some questions that were already asked to Constantine by you, thank you so much. And we will start our meeting with Constantine giving answers to those questions that he has already received. If we have some time at the end, we will be very happy to answer some more questions. So please do not hesitate to write those questions in the chat. If we don't have time or some technical things to answer this question today, we will answer them uh, below the video at our YouTube channel. Another option is that if, if a question is very, very, very specific, then we will just contact you personally and, and send you the answer to that question. 
privately via email. Also, if you have got any questions during the webinar, questions about the things that Constantine is already talking about, because you don't understand some detail or you want to want one would, would want him to be like a bit more specific, just raise your hand, I will unmute you, and uh, you will ask your question straight away, okay? So let's just, before we start, let's try raising hands, because when after afterwards, when you really wanna raise a hand, it's important for you to know how to do that. It's a little button next to chat at the bottom of the window. Yeah, yeah, great, great, okay, good. I see that at least some of you have learned the skill of raising hands. Thank you so much. Uh, and I think that we are ready to start. This is why I inviting to this virtual stage, the one and only, much beloved, Konstantin Rupasov. Please, Konstantin, the stage is yours. Thank you so much, Anna. Uh, okay, uh, welcome everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, you can. Okay, okay, awesome. Uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us. Uh, let me start sharing my screen and we'll get going. Okay, so <clears throat> this is what it is. As, as Anna said, it's a um, Q&A session and uh, we received some, some questions from you. Uh, not too many, but anyway, uh, we'll try to answer them, uh, most of them, because some of them are off topic or maybe too complicated to answer today, but we'll do our best. Anyway, uh, if we, if we uh, have no time to answer <clears throat> something or uh, maybe I don't know uh, the answer out of uh, the top of my head, uh, we will email you later and uh, you will get the answer anyway. So, uh, uh, now, uh, how, how, how it's supposed to go? How, how this uh, Q&A session, uh, what's, what's its format? Uh, I'm gonna answer your questions and Please don't let don't, don't don't leave me hanging here and talk to me because uh, that's uh, a bit uncomfortable to be the only person talking in the room. So please raise your hands and uh, answer any follow ups you've got or maybe some clarifications or maybe you want more details or anything. Uh, then I can help you with. Please please make your hand. We run. Uh, Anna will unmute you and. We'll, we'll talk. Uh, so after uh, after this uh, webinar is done, we will send you the uh, the presentation that you are seeing right now, and uh, we also gonna publish um, this video uh, to YouTube, and uh, you will also get the link to this video uh, as soon as it's published. Okay. So, uh, question number one, testing. So, the question reads like this. I would like to know more about the automated testing technologies supported by the platform or maybe libraries. Uh, thank you so much, whoever asked this question. This is a great one, I love it. And uh, the answer is uh, twofold. Uh, first of all, uh, there are two different types of testing, and uh, I, I'll talk a little bit about uh, both of them. First of all, uh, we have uh, functional testing. What it means is uh, that we want to check if our uh, application uh, passes all functionality tests, uh, works uh, correctly, uh, gives uh, correct answers uh, to users' questions, um, uh, generates no error messages and stuff like that. So this is uh, the functional testing. Uh, 
we also have a very different uh, animal called law testing. Uh, we, we, uh, its aim is to make sure that your app won't broke as soon as you reach some uh, significant number of users working uh, at the same time. So uh, it won't be too slow, it won't be, I don't know, f it won't freeze, it won't uh, crash or something like that. So these are two different uh, things and uh, the, the tools for, uh, for these two types of testing uh, are different. So first, first of all, uh, let's start with uh, functional testing. So the aim is to detect uh, any functional errors uh, the application might have. And uh, we have, uh, it, it, this kind of testing is actually supported by the platform. So we have platform feature called automated testing. Uh, I clicked link in, in the, um, uh, in the presentation and here is one SDN article about this feature. So, um, it's basically, uh, works like this. You run two clients. One of them is a test manager, this one to the left. And, uh, what it does, uh, it run the test itself. So it knows, uh, uh it has some kind of script. Um, and um, it runs uh, this script making the, the, second, uh, the second client, test client, uh, perform uh, different actions. So you can, so you have two clients and one of them knows uh, what it wants the second one to do. So it uh, uh, runs some uh, co comments uh, uh, in one C language, uh, in one script. And uh, the second client does what it asks, asks to do um, and performs these actions. So you can control if, uh, if everything goes, goes well, uh, as, as it's supposed to. Uh, so there are many interesting features uh, uh, here, first of all. So uh, here is an example of uh, using this kind of language and the difference, uh, uh, the, 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 interesting, uh, the interesting quirk of this one is that you uh, address, uh, you can address um, the um, uh, UI user interface uh, uh, user interface elements like forms and buttons and lists and stuff like that. So you can uh, emulate uh, user pressing buttons or clicking uh, mouse buttons uh, and this way tests how your application works. Uh, another interesting thing here is that you can actually you don't need uh, necessarily to write the script uh, as uh, as a one C script source code. You can just uh, perform those actions manually and record them uh, as 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 if it was some kind of a macro. And uh, these recorded uh, recorded sequence of actions uh, then can be um, translated into the comments of uh, these test script. Uh, so, uh, please go, uh, check out this, uh, check out this, uh, uh, article and this is, this is how we do, this is what platforms, uh, platform does to, um, to enable us to, to do, uh, func functionality, uh, functional testing. Uh, on top of that, uh, we have the application, one C uh, enterprise application called scripted testing. And uh, it uh, utilizes uh, this platform feature and brings it to the next level by um, allowing you to store tests, to store your scripts, to, um, uh, to set a schedule of when you want the tests to pass, to uh, remember what test so you already performed and what was uh, what were uh, the results of those tests so it makes uh, 
it, it's a kind of test infrastructure uh, built on top of this uh, platform feature uh, that I just showed you. Uh, at, this, at this moment, as of now, uh, we don't have the English version of this application because uh, we are, okay, I see raised hand, just, give, give, uh, just let me one more, uh, let me finish and then and we'll get to that. So um, we don't have uh, these application translated to English right now because uh, we, we, we are not sure about the priority of this task. So if you have any ideas how important this is, please let us know and we'll change our priorities. Okay, I saw the raised hand. Can uh, Anna, can you can you please unmute this uh, this uh, participant? Oh, I, I see. A second yes, rate. I have uh, unmuted Alexei. 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 Hi. Hi. Alexei, you wanted to ask something? Please talk. Or Alexei, please say something. Or you can write down your question in chat if this is more comfortable for you. This is always an option. Yeah, and there were uh, there was another. Uh, yeah, there was also Alexander. Um, something is not. Alexander, uh, you are unmuted. Please ask your question. Alexander. I'm Alexander Volkov. Uh, you have a question, you raise your hand, so we'll love to answer that. Uh, Unfortunately, like we cannot hear you. So maybe Alexander and Alexei, uh, could you please write down your questions in the chat area? Yes, and uh, can, can you comment on uh, this, um, uh, this audio issue? Uh, do you speak and we cannot hear you or uh, is it some problem on your side or on our side? Mm -hmm. what, mm -hmm. what you know? Alexander, Alexei, we, unfortunately we cannot hear you. The system tells me that you are unmuted, but still we, we hear zero. So let's do like this. Uh, please write down your questions and uh, Constantine will answer you. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Hi, Alexander. Please go on. Yeah. Welcome. Please say something. Ask your question. No question. Okay. Okay. At least we can hear him. At least we know that everything works. So, Constantine, yeah. that's an amazing test. We're actually speaking about testing. That was a test. Alexander, thank you so much for helping us test the system. Right. Yeah. And uh, Alexander? Alexander? No? That was Alexander speaking. Oh, okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. So, so it was uh, the functional testing and uh, the the second, uh, the second kind, the second type of uh, of testing is load testing. By, by the way, I forgot to ask, um, do you, can you see the presentation? Is it, is it shared? Is it okay? Anna? Yeah, I actually asked, asked our colleagues in the chat area and nearly everyone said yes. Unfortunately, Alex, Alexei has got some issues with that, but okay. it seems to be on his, or uh, and his computer. Okay, got it, got it. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll send it to everyone anyway. So, yeah, don't, don't worry. Just Let's just talk now and uh, we'll get the presentation later. So, the, the, second, uh, the second type of testing is called load testing. And uh, the, the purpose of this, uh, this guy is to check how many users can comfortably work with the application in uh, current uh, in in some in some setup in some specific conditions um, namely the uh, specific hardware and uh, system software like operating systems and stuff like that or uh, dbms specific dbms 
um, some specific uh, 1C app, for example, ERP or 1C drive, and a specific load profile, how many users uh, you have, um, who does what of those users, uh, what, um, what actions uh, they perform, and how often, and um, uh, with, with what settings, and what, what, what not. So. Um, and uh, we also have some uh, performance requirements. So we, um, we check if uh, the application can handle um, this kind of, uh, kind of workload uh, without slowing down, without breaking up, without uh, any bad stuff happening. Uh, and what we use uh, to, uh, to make these kind of things is called test center. It's uh, another uh, 1C application. And what it does, it runs any number of 1C bots um, uh, on any number of computers in your network. So you can script your tests, uh, you can build your bots, boats, and uh, then you just uh, say test center to run them and they start going emulating real users. Uh, and what's, uh, what's the big difference from the first uh, kind of testing is that here we have many, many, many users, real 1C users um, uh, represented by bots that uh, are working at the same time. Um, uh, while uh, for um, functional testing, we have uh, only two clients running one of them is test manager and the second one is a test client. So very different situation, very different scenarios of use. And uh, what we do, uh, usually we use both of them uh, in some sequence. So whenever a new version of anything uh, starting from the platform and uh, including all applications, whenever a new version of any of our products uh, um, is about to, to, to come out, to be published. Uh, we run uh, all kind of tests, including functional tests and including load tests. So uh, we can be sure that we didn't break anything since the last version, which is very important as all of you, of course, uh, know too well. Okay, uh, so uh, let's... Uh, Let's pause for a second. So this was uh, the testing. Uh, let's make sure uh, we have no questions, no follow-ups on this one. I saw a raised hand, Anna. Can we? Sure. One moment. This is Alexey Gerasimov. Hello, Hi. Alexey. Nice to meet you. Long time Alexey, no... you're unmuted, supposedly. Yeah. That's, that's a tricky way. Actually, Zoom is a very tricky thing to work with. I know, and right? Unmute yeah. and unmute doesn't work. That is surprising. No, it, it, it does work. Alexei. Yeah, it does work. On. Yeah, that's great. I should oh, have been on. confirmed. Hello, Konstantin. Uh, hi, hi. So nice to see you. To hear you. So nice to see you. So I would like to ask you one following question about load testing. As far as I know, for every client, I need a client license. Also, I need a server license for the application to run. Yes, you do. Is, yeah. is there any special licenses to perform load testing? Because it's not always possible that I have two sets of licenses, one for production and another one for testing. That, that, Thank that's you. a great question. Thank you so much. Uh, so uh, one C policy here is to... Uh, so we can, we can do it uh, two ways. Uh, either you do it yourself on your own licenses and uh, on your own time and uh, on your own discretion, you can do it, you can skip this, uh, this testing part, or uh, we can uh, do it together. So we could help you, we could check if you do everything right, and we can make sure that uh, your users will be happy with the performance of the app. Uh, after you unroll it. And uh, in this case, if we are uh, doing this low testing together, we can provide you with uh, temporary licenses. 
so you uh, don't have to buy them while you don't have so many users yet. And we just do the testing and we um, uh, revoke licenses and then you start uh, buying them, uh, buying as many as you need uh, uh, afterwards. So we can do it definitely. Please, um, if you have uh, uh, some, if if you have a need of this kind of testing right right away, please uh, email me and we'll we'll make it happen. That's that's not a problem. And there is one more question from John Smith. Uh, he is asking about Vanessa if it is good for testing purposes. Well, <clears throat> that's that's a third-party app, so um, I'm not sure if I can um, if I can discuss how good this is. But uh, I I personally uh, never used it uh, in my um, in my practice, so I'm not sure if it works. Uh, and by the way, if you have any uh, any kind of insight into this tool and how good is uh, how good it is, um, what's your experience with it? Uh, how how good it is um, in comparison with uh, Test Center and um, other testing tools we have? Uh, that will be extremely helpful for us. So please uh, email me with your thoughts on this Vanessa thing, whatever it is. And yeah, it, it, will be, it will be great. I will just jump in really quick. I know this is not my theme, but we yes. at one CI, the development team, we're using Vanessa. So for sure it is working, but it's totally not for me to discuss if it is working good or bad. So thank you for, for your question. So- uh, Oh, and there's also, you see, uh, Dmitry Shostabitov, is writing to all of us that Vanessa and uh, Va Vanessa is working very good and also Alexei Snitkovsky. So, Konstantin, something new for you to do today as well. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's awesome. And uh, uh, what kind of testing uh, does, does Vanessa do? Is it uh, functional testing or low testing? Dmitry, Alexei, please help me out. And there's also, let's like, see, uh, functional. It's functional testing. Okay. Uh, how, how, how is it uh, uh, comparing to the automated testing uh, built into the platform? Is it, is it good? Is it better? I think that, uh, please write down your answers in chat. Uh, and good. It's more user friendly. Okay. 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 That's good. Uh, maybe yeah, we can go to the next like question, Constantin. Yeah, it looks like I need to take a look to take a look at this, Vanessa. And yeah, we'll do, we'll do. Uh, okay, interesting. Something okay. new every day. Yeah, yeah. I'm afraid so. <laughs> that line of work I've got. Okay, uh, let's. Do you suggest Sonar Cube for code test? Again, another new name for me. Um, let me. Okay. Can we, uh, Anna? Can we somehow uh, collect all these questions? Yeah, so for sure. They are all being collected as we speak. So no oh, worries. So you will send them to me, and I will try to answer them later. Yes, maybe this is a theme for our next webinar. Yeah, maybe, or I just email the author of yeah. the, of the question. Okay, we use, and it's it's cool. Okay. Okay, yeah. let's get, let's get to the next question. Oh, okay. Drive development team use it. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Uh, let's uh, let's wait for uh, more question about questions about testing. A anyone have anything else? I'm really sorry, Alexei, I saw your hand, but I didn't get the time to unmute you. Yes, yes, Alexei uh, had some follow-up. Can we unmute him now? Uh, I'm not sure, oh, sure. Yeah, Alexei? 
Alexei. Uh, no, you... don't worry. I, I was just about to thank Konstantin for his answer and ask oh. about Sonar Cube, but it was already discussed. Thank yeah. you so much. I need to I need to take a look at this Sonar Cube thing, and uh, yeah, I, I will give you my opinion if you still need it. Uh, but it's interesting how, how many different tools uh, can be used uh, for the platform. So yeah, thank you for this. Okay, let's move on. Next question. Great question. I, I, I love this one. So uh, the question is about the service bus, uh, which is called uh, integra integration services. Uh, in, in in a new version of the platform, and uh, does does 8.3.17 feature fully functional service bus? And are you planning to write a manual on it? And here is here is a few words on the service bus. So what is this? First of all, it's actually a very it's 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 a part of the platform that was missing for quite some, some time now. And basically uh, uh, it was something that, uh, it was very hard to, to move on to ERP market, to the big systems market without this tool. So let's discuss it a little bit more. So first of all, it has everything to do with the, with the very big systems, uh, with the systems of ERP level. Uh, when you mm, when you uh, have uh, big applications, a big application with a lot of different functions, uh, with the many users, uh, with the very uh, strong connections between different parts of application, and um, like very uh, complicated, so very uh, in entangled and uh, complex system. Uh, in this case. Uh, what you uh, what you want to use is called uh, is called SOA service oriented approach. Uh, so you can click this link and see what it means. Basically, uh, it means that, that, that you break down your system into uh, separate services, uh, which are self contained and self sufficient. And they uh, each each of each of services uh, gives uh, implements uh, some some specific part of functionality. For example, CRM or something like this, uh, HR, um, accounting, and so on. But these are separate separate modules or separate services, and they need to talk to each other because uh, there are some some. Some da some da data needs to flow from one service to another. They they can uh, they need to ask each other and uh, uh, get the answers. So uh, this so they need a middleman, and this middleman is uh, is called enterprise service bus, or it's called integration services in one C terms. Uh, so what it does, uh, so this service bus uh, is basically uh, literally a few, a few things, but very important ones. First of all, it's a message broker and message queue. So it, uh, it lets services uh, to uh, send their questions in orderly way, store them and uh, run them asynchron asynchronously and uh, get, get get answers to, to whoever asked the question and stuff like that. Uh, it supports, it usually supports distributed transactions, so no data get lost in the process. Uh, it usually have some, has some um, internal protocol, unified internal protocol, and uh, translators for um, different APIs, because different services can have different APIs uh, uh, including in different formats, so you need a, you need ad adapters, translators, to to allow services with different uh, speaking different languages uh, uh, speak to each other. Uh, anyway, so this is what it does, and um, 
as I said, it, it is critically important for uh, ERP level systems, uh, meaning big ones, uh, complex ones, uh, uh, the systems uh, that are not very comfortable uh, to, uh, to unroll uh, as a whole, as, as, as one piece. So uh, anybody who, who ever deployed ERP knows uh, what, what pain this is to unroll this application this big uh, with this much of functionality as one piece. That's very, very hard. Uh, so what, uh, what ERP um, uh, providers usually do uh, they break it, br break down the application into pieces, into separate services, and deploy each service, uh, deploy services one by one. So you deploy HR, for example, uh, to start with, or you deploy sales uh, subsystem. And some some users already start working, and uh, so, some part of the system is already functional. You uh, at, at this time you continue to implement or to test or to unroll another part of, of the system. For example, account. As soon as you're ready, you just connect it to the same service bus and uh, may, make it start talking to the uh, to other parts of the system. So uh, you, uh, you 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 implement you you deploy your application gradually, piece by piece, not uh, not not as a whole uh, at once, which is much easier and just much more realistic uh, actually, because sometimes when you when, when you when you try to unroll the big application as a whole, that's that can be painful for 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 the business and the. Um, uh, it, it just might not work, and I've seen this. So this modular approach is uh, extremely, extremely useful, but only for very big systems. Uh, okay, and uh, service bus in one's enterprise. First of all, it's already uh, implemented and published in uh, the latest uh, 8.3.17. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a better version. It's for uh, testing purposes only. Uh, but, uh, but this service bus is already there. And I checked, I saw, uh, I saw interfaces and I, I played with it a little bit yesterday. Not that I perform any uh, um, any serious tests on it, but uh, it's there. It works. You can start playing with it. So please do and give us your feedback. If if anything doesn't work as it's supposed to, let us know. And yeah, we'll we'll, we'll see it. Uh, we'll, we'll see what's going on. Uh, about uh, learning materials, books, video lessons, etc. They are coming. When and in, in which form, that's up to you actually. Because uh, at this point, uh, as, as we see the situation, there are not so many uh, big systems in, uh, in Western markets, uh, outside, outside Russia, let's say. Uh, and uh, service bus is uh, very, um, crucial part of those big systems. So if you have some big project uh, that you really uh, that you really need to utilize this service bus, please let us know. Again, we'll, we'll, we'll help you by, by any means uh, necessary. And we'll see how it goes. But uh, as of now, as of now, we don't uh, don't see much of an appetite for uh, for these tools, so that's how we see it. Uh, so please, I, I, I saw a raised hand, Alexei, again. Can we un unmute him? So Hello. please Alexei? let's talk about this, yeah. yeah. Let's talk about this boss. Konstantin, do you think that service bus can be also usable for a small application, not ERP scale? What, uh, what do I mean? Uh, for example, you have a modular application. Some processes could be asynchronic. 
And it's very easy to to scale the application if you build it from this. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, again, that, that's a question of balance. That's a question of your resources and your uh, final final goal. If you have time and if you have resources to unroll uh, service bus, it's uh, it's another part of the system. It's a complication of a system. It will require more resources from you. But if you uh, if you look at uh, the um, if you look far ahead and you know that you will need it uh, down the road and you ha and you can do it, you can afford it, please, please do. Let's just, it's, you know, it's very, uh, very reasonable to start, start from, start using it right away. Basically, we have only small implementations like 10 to 40 That's what I heard, yes. Yeah. And it's not needed for this type of implementation. But I'm starting to think if my modules inside the system are very separate, it will be much easier for me to implement and also it will be much easier to scale in the case I do need this. Yeah, also, so for, example, for example, for posting purposes, uh, the accounting do not need information uh, right at the second. So it could be postponed, and service bias is a great way of doing that. But it seems to me in this case, for small application, the service bus also needed to be inside the uh, platform itself. So do you know, is there any plans to include it in the platform, or it will be a separate application? Uh, sorry, I, I, I missed the last, the last part. The last question is, uh, if you build your application uh, with service, by, service bus in mind, uh, it will work fine for large ERP installations when you have a separate service, separate service. but if you build uh, a small system or implement like for 10 people, Mm -hmm. It will be easy to implement if service bus is already inside the platform itself to not deploy additional service, etc. Yes. Do you know if any plans to do this? No? Any plans to do what? So uh, it's To, to in, uh, include not just the client part of service bus inside the once enterprise platform, but the service side. Uh, the service side is, is included, so uh, the, the, it's not uh, that uh, uh, the platform pr uh, provides um, the uh, the interface to some uh, some third party um, some third party bus. It provides the bus itself. It so is included. It is included. Yes, oh, okay. I, I believe so. As far as I as far as I understand uh, the. Uh, the I think articles. I have read that it's outside, it's just an interface. Uh, it's a separate part of, this, of the platform. So yeah. it's, 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 not, uh, it's not sitting inside the server or something. It's a separate part like uh, interaction mm -hmm. system uh, okay. and, and um, for example, EDT, Enterprise Development Tools. It's just a separate part. It's a separate uh, uh, executive and uh, executable and um, but it, it exists, you can run it and you can start using it right away. You don't need to utilize somebody else's um, uh, service bus. If, uh, there is a service bus uh, included into the platform. And by the way, um, uh, to your point uh, about w when to start using it, I actually agree uh, that it's better to start uh, using this uh, this tool right away uh, because it makes it simpler for you to organize your application to split it into some reasonable parts and not to try uh, uh, to squeeze uh, uh, squeeze it all into one application and um, make it huge and make it bulky and make it unmanageable you know it's always better to work with the separate pieces and uh, just uh, make them talk to each other. 
So if yeah, you but... if you're up to this, uh, but but again, uh, it will require some resources uh, because that's that's a separate part. It will require maintenance and. Uh, some administrative um, efforts and stuff like that. There might be errors, uh, of course, in this uh, in this tool. So let's let's try. Uh, I I'm I'm afraid uh, we don't have uh, enough experience uh, using yet. it yet. So exactly. Exactly. We, we we don't know uh, how good it will work in what cases. So let's try together, and again, I, I will I will be happy to hear from you what what what, what your experience. Great, Alexey, thank you so much for your question, and also Dmitri, I'm happy that you have your uh, question already answered. As we are a little bit running out of time, maybe let's get to the next oh, question. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I I I I can see a few questions in in the in this uh, in the chat area uh, yeah but you've yeah. answered all of them already mm -hmm. did i okay yeah. okay let's move on so uh next question is called uh, regular expressions oh mm -hmm. I'm, I'm moving on okay yeah there was so, one more extra question uh, about the about cost of service bus oh uh, i i I haven't heard anything about the cost. Uh, I believe okay. it's I, I believe it's included uh, into the uh, usual um, uh, usual once enterprise license, but uh, I'm not sure if it's in the pro version or in, in in usual version. I would guess that it's only in the pro version because that's what big guys, big boys need. So usually that's the pro range uh, of. Uh, of li licensing okay. but uh, but again that's that's only my guess because um, i don't think there the, the, there was a email there was a, a formal formal announcement uh, uh, what, what kind of pricing will there be so that's I, okay it's brand new completely it's, new feature uh, it, it's, it's, we'll it's, see we'll see dmitry sorry if we're not having the answer stage. it's in a testing stage yet so Okay, so uh, let's okay, that's okay. Let's move on. So uh, next question: regular expressions. Uh, the question is: when will be when will we be able to use regular expressions in one C enterprise internal language? Uh, uh, I, I guess that uh, the question was about um, the DB, uh, database search. So when we can use um, regular expressions when we run uh, one C query. That's just my guess, but uh, that's the most, uh, the most uh, reasonable, the most reasonable uh, thing to, uh, to expect. So uh, first of all, what, what, what is regex? Uh, that's, uh, uh, when you want to find a, a substring inside of a big string in, in a database, uh, you need to specify a pattern that you're looking for. Uh, and the, uh, the simplest exam example of the pattern is uh, uh, like operand in, uh, in SQL, right? When, when, you, when you write something, something like where some field like, and then you specify the pattern that Need, need, that needs to be looking for, and you use some special symbols inside of this pattern to tell the uh, DBMS that, uh, for example, instead of uh, this person sign, uh, there might be any number of any symbols. So we uh, we're looking for a pattern, but it can be anything on both sides of this pattern. Uh, this is the very simple example that is supported by virtually any, any DBMS. Um, regex is uh, the further, further uh, development of this idea uh, and uh, it's a very um, very complex, very uh, cryptic uh, uh, kind of notation uh, that allows you to specify very, very um, uh, 
complicated uh, complicated patterns uh, uh, that might look uh, something like this uh, if you can see right here so for example this last one matches any valid email address so you can run this uh, regex and it will check uh, it, it 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 will find all uh, uh, valid email addresses uh, inside of a big string or inside of a database so this is the idea and um, this is what happens in real life so uh, uh, as you know, once enterprise supports four different uh, DBMSs and they uh, support different uh, versions of uh, regex and to different, different extent. So first of all, uh, Microsoft SQL does not support regex almost at all. It has its own a very limited, uh, very limited um, syntax, uh, ki kind of a version of regex. I wouldn't even call it uh, regex because it's a very simple one, uh, but it, it has some kind of uh, some kind of uh, patterns, some patterns uh, notation, and uh, Postgres SQL has some support, and Oracle database and uh, IBM DB2 have full support. So our problem, our problem as, as, a, as a platform is that we don't know how to support this feature on the once enterprise site. It actually seems to be not possible at all. So if DBMS doesn't support it, uh, there is nothing we could do about it. So we cannot uh, support regex syntax unless uh, DBMS um, we work with supports it uh, too. And uh, the, the main problem here is Microsoft SQL Server, which is our main most popular uh, database by far. Uh, and it does not support it. So what we did, uh, we supported uh, this, um, this, limited and, uh, this limited version of SQL Server supports. And uh, this is it. As far as I know, there is uh, no current, no active plans of supporting reg access, reg access um, in, in near future. Uh, it's unfortunate and uh, we would like to change it, but uh, we don't know how. We don't know how. And uh, it also, uh, we, could, we could support uh, reg access for other uh, DBMSs so for Oracle, for Postgres, uh, but we're not sure how important this is. So this kind of partial support for, for some uh, DBMSs, that, that, that is usually what we are trying to avoid by all means, because um, if, we, if we do uh, support some feature for some DBMSs, uh, DBMS and not for other, uh, there will be a situation when you have, when you need to have two different source codes for different DBMSs, which is, which is, uh, we, we want, we want it avoided at all costs, because that makes your, your life as a developer much, much harder. So this is uh, how I see it now. And I can see a lot of questions. That there is a question from Dmitry Sergeyev. Okay. Uh, will one see QR constructor support Postgres SQL syntax features, like work with JSON in a query? Uh, again, um, as I said, uh, we, are, we are trying not to support something that one DBMS has and other uh, DBMSs don't have. Because uh, if we do, we basically uh, make you uh, implement different versions of applications for different DBMSs, which defeats uh, the purpose of the platform. Uh, one, one of its great features is uh, that you can migrate from one DBMS to another uh, in no time, just by t uh, downloading the uh, uh, DT file and uploading it again. Uh, if, if, we, if we support some uh, DBMS specific features, um, this, uh, this important feature will be lost. You won't be able to migrate this, this easily. Uh, one more question from Dmitry Shostabitov. 
Uh, can one use regex in code, not for search purposes in data in SQL? Will okay. this will that uh, be well, in the future in the platform? Yeah, I, I, I see the question. So about regex and code. Yeah, that's uh, that's actually uh, another another um, usage for regex. I, I'm not sure. I, I tried to think. Uh, I tried to think yesterday about uh, some real life task that needs uh, uh, regex in, uh, in in one C script, not in one C query, but in one C script. And I couldn't uh, couldn't come up with anything. <clears throat> but uh, what I did find is uh, the um, uh, kind of workaround. Um, uh, I found uh, the article uh, in the internet and some some brilliant guy uh, used um, XDTO, uh, XDTO package to translate to, um, to, to, kind, to kind of uh, emulate uh, the regex search. And the code is, it's like one, one page of a code. It's very, it's, it's, it's very, um, it's not easy to understand what this code does, but it looks like it works. And uh, if you um, uh, leave your email, I will, I, I will send you a link. So the, uh, the answer is yes, you can use regex uh, in one C script right now. It's a, it's a bit of work around. It's not, not not a not a platform feature, but there is uh, there is a workaround. So, okay, and there is some uh, uh, extra comment from Dmitry Shostabitov. Uh -huh. um, I actually think that that's a really interesting discussion that you could keep on uh, in a, like more private mode because we're actually running out of time, and we would really love to answer some more questions. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, about about running out of time. Um, let me let me so um a few more things there were another question uh, there were more questions and uh, i couldn't answer them today and these are those questions where to start when it comes to working with uh, foreign businesses that's uh, kind of uh, off topic for uh, today's uh, q a session and uh, second question, chatbot system for one C platform. I'm not sure if I understand what the question is about, so I need some clarification. And how to patch KDE on free BSD? Raise raise hands who know what it means. So well, actually, uh, there is there there were two <laughs> hands risen. You see. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I couldn't expect less. Yeah. So uh, that's very interesting, but very specific or off topic, or maybe I'm just not ready to answer it yet. So please uh, contact me, uh, use this email address. If you don't have it, please write it down or you will receive it uh, along with the uh, presentation. So please email me and we'll continue talking about these questions, um, not during the, not during the um, webinar. So I want to jump in really quick to answer the question. Uh, could you please go back to the slide with unanswered questions? Yep. Yeah, with other questions, sorry. Where to start when it comes to working with foreign businesses? That's an excellent question, really interesting one. Yes. Please yes. write an email to sales at 1c.com and write a little bit about yourself. We will for sure contact you and we'll talk a lot about different possibilities on different markets. Now, uh, we actually don't have so much time, but I think that we can spare five more minutes to answer questions. Uh, during this session, you were putting some uh, questions in the chat uh, section. Um, first question was from John Smith. What's new in the upcoming 8.3.17 release? And we've talked already a lot about service bus, maybe something else, uh, uh, like the, some, some features of interest because we actually do not have too much time. Um, there, are, there are some minor changes, uh, minor uh, improvements here and there, but uh, nothing to, to make a big deal of, except okay. for uh, this service bus, which is uh, the most important feature um, now the platform uh, got since I don't know, 
maybe maybe since the cluster uh, which that's uh, huge yeah so it's 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 really it's a really big deal and that's that's the main feature but there are some some minor improvements uh, in different places uh, actually uh, I believe we ha uh, we have to we have to have a list of those improvements. So if you are interested, please let me know uh, uh, by email, and I will send it to you. Now there is a huge amount of questions in the chat section. Thank you so much for your participation, dear colleagues. We really do not have so much time, so I will just read out the questions that were asked before the end. Uh, before now, oh, yeah, well, so uh, some of there are a lot of questions, cool. but yeah. um, one of them is about uh, getting back to the question about service bus. Can you please give an example of implementation service bus for simple case interacting with, with catalog persons in HR and in ERP connection via service bus? That's a question from Artyom Pazdev. Uh, yeah, so. Again, we, we don't have much of an experience um, as of now about using the service bus, but as, as I can see it, uh, uh, you actually can, can save some resources by uh, implementing, by unrolling the uh, service bus first, and then starting to implement uh, application piece by piece, like function, uh, some functional block, some module, um, uh, first, and um, uh, you can start using it already. Uh, you can unroll it, and users start working with it, and uh, it's 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 already up and running. And you start, uh, and you continue working on different parts of the system uh, while users are already using your system in in the part that that is already uh, operational. So it makes sense actually to break down your application into smaller uh, self-sufficient pieces anyway. Uh, but uh, there are some caveats, right? So it will slow down your application because when it works in, as one piece, it, it will be faster. Mm -hmm. When it uses uh, the middleman, um, the service bus is a middleman, it will take some time to uh, send message to receive the answer to process it and uh, that kind of stuff uh, so again it's 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 a question of balance and we are not really sure where the right balance is as of now so we need more experience please uh, please start playing with it uh, please start trying it in different circumstances and we'll learn together where where, where is the best usage for this awesome new feature. Great, thank you so much, Constantine. So unfortunately, we are out of time already. I will just really fast answer one of the questions that it was more business related, not uh, development related. This is a question about uh, real installation and customers in non-Russian speaking countries, specifically in US. Uh, so we have got I think for now we've got, we actually have got a whole product running in the United States of America. Uh, it's called Accounting Suite. And uh, it has got lots of users right now. I'm not sure about the number, but it's actually going quite well for this product in States. And we also have got some implementations of uh, our product Quancy Drive. There are three of them currently. And we've got some pre-sales going on. If you are interested in this market, once again, please write to write an email to sales at 1c.com. We'll be happy to discuss new opportunities and your ideas as well. Uh, thank you everyone for your participation and for your questions. We haven't answered all of them, but this is not an actual problem because we will answer them below the video on our YouTube channel. Yes, and we will. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. You were awesome. Thank you for uh, for your questions, uh, for your activity. That was actually quite good. We we should make it more often, Anna. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, yeah. I actually think that that's a great idea. We should make it like once in like regularly. Yeah. Yeah, once in three months, once once in six months. But let, let's not make promises. Uh, no promises yet. Yeah. No promises <laughs> made. 
Once again, thank you so much. And uh, the question that we wanted to ask you about the video course about Once Enterprise, this question will just pop up right now. Please take a moment to answer that. Just because Constantine is working on that uh, yeah, video course so that's much, very it, it's very that's important that's to that's see that's some that's feedback that people that's are, yeah. yeah I, want, I want it to grow. Uh, that's actually, uh, do you see the numbers, Constantine? Yeah. Okay. I will. I would like to see one hundred percent, but that's not that's yet. Not that's yet. That's We're getting there. No worries. No worries. Okay. It always takes time for babies to grow. Uh, so once again, thank you so much. The video recording of the web webinar will be on our YouTube channel. You will receive a link to this webinar to to the YouTube channel and the presentation. And let's keep in touch. One CI on air every week just for you thank you so much guys hope Great. you like thank that you guys. uh see you soon talk to you soon thank bye -bye. you bye bye have a nice day